OK. So in this case, what they're asking us to do is to graph it and then label all the important parts. So it is important on your test that when I say graph it, you're not getting away with labeling the important parts. You also have to make sure you can label all the important features. So this is a hyperbola. I can notice that by the subtraction, right? So since this is a hyperbola, remember hyperbolas are always a squared minus b squared, right? I understand 16 is larger than 4. But remember, hyperbolas, a squared minus b squared. Therefore, a squared equals 4 and b squared equals 16. So please do not make that mistake because you weren't writing that one down. You've got to be very careful because always people say, oh, a 16, that's a squared. That's true for ellipses. It's not going to be true in the case of hyperbolas. All right? So now that I know my a squared, my b squared, I can say a equals um, 2, b equals 4. All right, our center, actually, let's write that over here. Center is going to be 1, 2. All right. And so now, just like we did before, so let's go and plot this, because we need to plot that. So our center is 1, 2, over 1, up 2. Now, what we need to determine is determine, is this a transverse axis that is vertical or a transverse axis that is horizontal? Since my y coordinate is over my a, that's going to make this vertical. Very good. So therefore, you don't have to draw your transverse axis. But a lot of times, I like to write it there so I just don't make my mistake. Yes? I thought it was 2 comma 1. It is 2 comma 1. Thank you very much for that. That's another very common mistake that if I'm not paying attention, I will make, that you got to be very careful not to make as well. Yes, a lot of times, everybody just reads left to right. Be careful. The x coordinate, that's your h. So it is over 2, up 1. Be very, very careful with that. Thank you. That is your center, 2 comma 1. So since my transverse axis is vertical, that is very important. And I just drew it in there so I can remember, don't make you know, don't make a mistake, because my center, my vertices, and my foci all lie on that axis. Bless you. So. To determine my foci, or I'm sorry, my vertices, it's just like an ellipse with my a. But since everything is going vertical, is my center, is that x value of my center going to change? Or is that x value going to change from the center? No, because it's on the same axis. So to find the vertices, I'm just going to have 1, comma, 2, plus or minus 2. Right? You're just going to add and subtract 2 to the y coordinate. So if I have 1, comma, um, so it would be 1, comma, 4, and 1 comma, neg one comma negative 1. All right, does that make sense? Yes? Oh, I forgot to rewrite it up here. Thank you. Good job. So therefore, that's going to be 3 and 2 negative 1. Correct? OK. So I go over 2, up 3. That's a vertice, and then down 1. All right, so those are my two vertices. The next thing I need to determine is my foci. So again, to find our foci, we need to find the value of c. We don't have the value of c. We only have the value of a and b. So we go into our formula. c squared equals a squared plus b squared, right? Hyperbola is our subtraction, so that formula is addition, always the opposite. So I have c squared equals a squared is 4 plus 16. So therefore, c squared equals bente. Take the square root. c equals the square root of 20, which root? Um, excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. Yeah. Excuse me. Thank you. Still got a little bit more to go. So c equals 2 squared of 5. Now, ladies and gentlemen, you will probably have one that's going to be like an irrational number like that. Just estimate it. I'm not, it's OK. Um, we know that square root of 20 is going to be between, between 4 and 5, right? If you estimate the square root of 20, it's between 4 and 5. So just don't go above 5 units, and just don't go below 4 units, and I'll call it good. So my foci, you still need to write it in there. 2 comma 1 plus or minus 2 square root of 5. So therefore, that's going to be, well, you can just leave it like that. I'm not going to make you rewrite those. Um, So therefore, that's going to be up 
one, two, three, four. Okay. And one, two, three, four. Okay. Guys, I'm hearing way too many backpacks that are going on, and I just need you guys just to hold off for a second because I'm not done the next important part. Yes? Yeah, you can just approximate with the calculator. It's going to be four something. All right, now I'm not done yet because now the next important thing is you have to have your asymptotes. If you don't have your asymptotes for the hyperbola, you're not going to get full credit. All right, ellipse, you don't have your asymptotes. Parabola, you don't have your asymptotes. But for this, we do. So again, to do that, I need to use my b, which is 4. So I'm going to go over 4 from my center. 1, 2, 3, 4. To the left 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. Then I create a box with my vertices and my covertices. Okay? From there, corner to corner through the center are my asymptotes. Yes, you have to provide the asymptotes. Okay. Therefore, now that opens up. Unless I ask for them in there. Yes. You don't have to, but that's the easiest way to go and get to it.